We said we were going to postpone talking about the formative assessments until next week. So you guys have another week if you want to try something different or tweaking the formative assessment in order to be able to fit your class best. So that way when we come back next week, we're going to have that moment to share all that information. Today, we're going to visit data. Some of you guys were here already at the end of last year when we were looking at the 2014 STAR information. Now we're going to add on to 2015. But I want to revisit the 2014 because not everybody got a chance to do that. So again, using your highlighters, go through and find areas of strength, areas of weakness, maybe color code them, find out uh, which ones we did really well on. And then if you have any questions about some of the objectives that I posted on your paper, let me know. I mean, you have these two, definitely let them show you. That's what the data shows. Okay. So that's pretty much what we did. We only have two names. Just use What's it? Like and then for all the kids that are high, for me it was like anything I thought of. Oh, uh, so, so, so these are low. <laughs> scary. I hope they want to think. It's really shocking to see this. Yeah. Like, like you didn't think. Like, these, like, yeah. the one I was yeah. expecting yeah. were probably we the these last um, ones besides the ocean ball. Because so, I feel like your students uh, want to know about the ocean, they want to know about the universe, they want to know about the so things. But the one that's driving me uh, crazy is, is one of our low ones was differentiating between elements and compounds, which for the most part is not super complex. It's a low. Yeah, that's what you, that, it's a low. What James? A low thinking level? Is that what? It's, it's actually mid level thinking. Is it? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, I, I I know I can't see the question, but I pay five dollars if I could see what the questions were, because I'm just wondering if there was something that our students didn't connect with the way the question was written, or maybe the example that was used. Yeah, and I can easily pull that into another PLC whenever we talk about oh, yeah, it. Yeah, so bring in some questions. I was going to say, it might be nice to have have those well ones and see what is layered on top of it, because just differentiating between elements and compounds feels like the kids would probably be able to do that, but maybe if there was some sort of graphic that they had to look right. at, or some sort of table that well, they had to the, analyze. Well, we think we do a pretty decent job at when we're testing this unit, and the funny thing is we're doing this unit right now. <laughs> we, we think we do a pretty good job of this. And from the, uh, you know, from, from what I'm seeing this year, and from what I've seen in the years past, I wouldn't have ever thought that we would come in below 50% yeah. in the springtime on that two years later. Yeah. But and we did. Certainly the common assessment results don't lead us to believe that. No. So that's why my question is about um, what process skill is paired with this with particular question. Right. And was it actually the process skill that was trickier than differentiating between an element and a compound? Right. It may not have been straightforward. It may have been the process mm -hmm. where they got to take it apart. Mm -hmm. The first one was organic compounds, about 43.3%. Uh, organic compounds, uh, that's usually our more uh, difficult concept to get across to the kids. It is. Uh, and I, I want to say that if we look at the 2015 uh, results, we're going to see uh, okay. an increase, yes. Yeah. Uh, so I do, I feel better about... Uh, what you guys yeah. included last year. And we, that would be something great to add into the reflection after you see the 2015. Mm -hmm. Like, what did you do last year? What did right. you guys... Uh, implement that was different from 2014, so that way you can make a little note about some of the changes. Right. Our two lowest um, that are, it was 57%, um, was the day and night seasons and how the earth rotating affects seasons and the lunar cycle, which whenever we did our first days, um, we did some labs on the first day and I had them write out what are they super excited to learn in science, and 90% of them talked about seasons and space. One of the things I was focused on was um, verbs. So instead of writing the whole objective, the whole standard, I just wrote verbs. Differentiate, calculate, identify, model, mm -hmm. demonstrate, interpret, describe, explore. Those are the verbs. And um, if you classify those, most all of them are mid-level thinking, level two, except for the couple of identified, yeah. low level in seventh grade. But most of them are mid-level thinking. And again, I'm just curious about um, 
I think it'd be nice to see it layered on top of that process stuff. Which, I'm glad you mentioned that, because you had a question earlier about maybe a mistake in the data that I gave you. Oh no, I saw it's created. Yes. And so. Now, I want everybody to take a moment and look at those 8th grade objectives that are listed there. If you look at your 7th grade or your 6th grade or even your 8th grade, the very front ones, the ones that are 8.2B, it says 60%. 8.2D, 63%. Yeah. 8.2E, 69%. 8.3b, 67%. 8.3d, 80, well, 79%. We're up there, yeah. right? But those other ones, and I like the fact that you mentioned that they were 8th grade, because what I want you guys to do is look at the 8.2, because I gave you guys a whole packet. If you look at the 8.2b and compare it to 6.2b or 7.2b, you're going to notice that there's some similarities. Everything looked good on data. Yeah. What threw me off on uh, a lot was potential energy and kinetic energy. The two years ago was um, 78%. We dropped like 38%. And I'm looking at the teacher here that says the students need to compare and contrast potential and kinetic energy. And we're, we're doing that. So I'd like to see what content for the question is. I think there were some process skills layered on top. And I think that's what makes it a different type of question. Yeah. And I think there was like more, they used, um, Potential kinetic energy inside energy transformation. Because I've seen questions like that mm -hmm. mixed and where it's mixed together, where we have one unit is transforma energy transformation, and then later on we did potential kinetic energy. Tim came up with his lab about two or three years ago on KE and PE, and I think you've seen it, maybe, maybe not. But there's so many different stations around the room, and it's very, very dynamic, and we lose like little parts and BBs and things. Yeah. But the students get so much out of this lab. They see. I yeah. know that we are doing so much better at teaching KE and PE since we started doing that lab that you put together than what we did for the last, you know, six or seven years before that. The human body systems, for example. Yeah. I mean, that shot up a. Like 39%. I mean, I, again, it could be just one question. Like, I know the 2014, I believe, was just one question, but yeah. it's, still, it's still nice to look at. And yeah, yeah. and it, it really does show, because I know how hard you guys have been working, and so some of these questions, it really does represent your growth mm -hmm. and with the students, their retention. So what else did you notice? Um, when dealing with uh, whether or not work is being done, uh, that went up as well. Good. 12%, so it's still... It's nice to know that our hard work's paying off. And then in eighth grade, what'd you notice? Um, the ones that I was actually concerned about with the seasons and the lunar cycles went up um, close to 20%, a little under 20%, um, which is great. Went from a pretty low failing grade to passing, so that's great. And then um, our periodic table and speed and velocity, some of the ones that had a lot of lower grades went up. We went from 60s to 80s in some of them. So that was really exciting. Um, but we still have some issues with a few of the same ones. Mm -hmm. that, and the, the scores actually went down a little bit in some of them. Now, Amanda, Kyle, some of this, these results are also based on some of the new information that we're getting from our curriculum planning, our lesson planning days. And Hernandez, you probably bring that back. And you and Kurt have talked about it, and you guys implemented it, and it's shown, you know? Mm -hmm. Same thing. So. We might have to sometimes sit down and collaborate about what we did last year in order to kind of keep those results going. Mm -hmm. okay. Because what we do during those lesson planning days really help beef up our lesson plans and make them a little bit more substantial, I think. Now, again, when we were looking at all this information, we reflected a little bit on the number of questions and how, how accurate the data is. But then also we needed to take into consideration the layering. Like, it's not just the content but they're also layering it with some process skills. And so looking down below, you can kind of see where we are now still. I don't know if you guys looked at the eighth grade this time, those process skills, and looked at where they're they up. are now in two, uh, 2015. <laughs> We're still working on the data and predicting trends. That one went down a little bit. And again, how many questions? But usually process skills are 40% of the test. And it can't be 40% of the test if it's just the process skills by themselves. So we know they're being overlaid on top of other questions. Application. Mm -hmm. We have done a great job with this information. 
what do the students need to know? And I wanna share what Tim has created for the front of his folders because I think that really targets for the students, what do they need to know? Because remember how Tim created this page of all the student-friendly peaks at the beginning and the kids are able to kind of go through and check off or number how well they were successfully on that objective. So I think we're hitting this really well content-wise. And then how do we know if they know it? I think we're doing a great job looking at data, looking at that information going, okay, do they know this? If they don't know this, what are we doing? What do we need to improve on? And then how are we doing in the orange? What do we do? if they didn't learn it. That's something we always need to be continuously thinking about and improving on. And I think I know for a fact that I can do better in this area. How do I reteach or go back and visit this information for those students who didn't get it? While I'm hitting the orange, we need to make sure what do we do for the students that did get it? So all of this is content oriented, but I want us to consider, and this is something we can discuss at a later time at another PLC, It's not a separate concept, even though it's on a separate page. Think of it as we're overlapping it, but it's the process skills now. Are we following and tracking those as well as we're con uh, tracking the content skills, <coughs> the content no. objectives? What do we, what do the students need to know as far as the, the process mm -hmm. skills go? Mm -hmm. Have we narrowed that down? What do we need to do, or how do we know if they got it? Do we know if they got it? Do we know if they got those content or those process skills? And then what do we need to do if they didn't get it? Like, are we treating these process skills the same way that we're hitting these contents? So that's going to be our next question in a later PLC. Okay. 